Riders, thinking about getting a full face helmet? Do it. Please do it. Riders, welcome back to the channel and today we're talking about full face helmets. Are they worth it? I think they are. About six months ago, I decided to buy my Bell Super DH and uh, let me tell you, when I was in Australia, I was riding a trail I didn't know on a bike I didn't know and I thought I'd be a hero. Anyway, I came around a blind corner, misjudged the corner and I head butted the ground so hard. A bit off camber, rocky, loose. Oh, I can't see anything. Ah! <laughs> Something that makes me laugh these days is we we go, oh, we're going downhill riding today. Put our full face helmet on, put all our pads on. The next day we're like, oh, we're gonna go um, enduro riding. And we have our enduro helmet, which is an open face helmet. Sometimes some pads, not really that much pads. If you really look at the trails and the tracks that we're riding, the difference between downhill and enduro tracks is very little. I say these days, if you can get a full face helmet for 850 grams, like this bad boy, just do it. I mean, how much does that Hollywood smile cost? Like, I don't want to land on my face. I have some friends that have broken their teeth. Another shout out to Julian. Um, and it's expensive. I'd love to know uh, out there riders who's, who's come a cropper, who's broken some teeth, and how much does it cost. The Bell Super DH is a great option because it's a full face, and an open face helmet. Um, for me, that was important because uh, I travel a lot. Being Australian, I go back to Australia normally one or two months a year, and normally in summer, and also ride in summer in Spain. So I needed a helmet with good ventilation that was DH rated, that was an open face, and that was comfortable. I personally think the Bell Super DH ticks all the boxes but there are some other options on the market. But when I was buying this helmet six months ago, there was three options. The Bell Super DH, the Troy Lee Stage, and Gyro Switchblade. The Gyro Switchblade is, a, in my opinion, probably a better looking helmet, but the Gyro is a full face, it's, a, it's like a half cab helmet. It comes off to about here. To be honest, I did buy that helmet. I tried it on in the house. The sizing was a little bit wrong. Uh, do the measurements of your head a couple of times. For me, the gyro came up a little bit small. I just found it a little bit uncomfortable. That's just me, a personal opinion. Uh, my other friends love the helmet. And also, it, the ventilation, it didn't, it, it was a bit, it felt like, like a BMX open face helmet. It di you did feel more protected, but granted both helmets have the DH rating. But I just felt that for what I was gonna do with the helmet, travel to Australia, uh, ride in four, 35, 40 plus degree conditions, I just felt the Super DH was a better fit for me. And after six months later, I loved the helmet. And the Troy Lee Stage, look, being a fanboy, I love that helmet. If I had a lot of money, I would buy that helmet. It is around 100 US or 100 euros more expensive than the Bell or the Gyro. I believe it's come down a little bit um, in the last couple of months. It is lighter, but also you don't have the option of taking off the mouthpiece. I'm not 100% sure on all three helmets, but I do know that the Bell Super DH does have the MIPS. You're probably saying, what the hell is MIPS? So I'm gonna read you a quote from the Bell uh, website. MIPS, spherical, enhanced our ability to address high speed and low speed impacts as well as rotational impacts. Think of it as a comprehensive protection. With the added bonus, we can design better helmet ventilation too. Thanks, Bell. Thank you, Bell. That made it so much clearer. But basically, it's like a shell inside a shell. Um, look, I'll, I'll do a close up, but if you can see inside here, it's like a, a little shell that moves around, which does make the helmet a little bit bigger on your head. We do ride these bikes pretty hard and I, I do appreciate all the help I can get with an extra extra bit of padding in that helmet. So MIPS, if I'm buying a helmet in 2019, I would want MIPS. So I've told you all the good things about the Bell Super DH, but what about the bad and the ugly? Okay, the bad. 
I mean, I, I know these designers out there think about making our life easier, and normally they do, but the new Bell helmet uh, have like a magnetic clip when you're putting the helmet on to tighten it up. And uh, look, it's okay, and it, when it works, it's great. And when it doesn't work, it's super frustrating. When you got, when you got gloves on, the goggles on, it can be a bit frustrating, but after having it six months, I have got used to it and it is faster and the ugly. Granted, I am almost 40 and I do sweat it a lot, but this little bit here, like the pad for your head, once I start sweating it up, this just drops down and it just bounces around my forehead when I'm going downhill. That is bloody annoying. Bell designers, sort that out for the next one. So, does it rock or does it suck? This helmet definitely rocks. If you're in the market for a full face, open face, sort of all-in-one model, I would definitely be looking at the Bell Super DH, which is definitely a great helmet. I've really enjoyed it, it saved my bacon a few times. There's more information on the Bell Super DH, the gyro switchblade and the trolley stage in the links below. Riders, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it and smash that like button. It's really good for the algorithms. Riders, until next time, stay classy out there and I'll see you next Friday.